So we're going to go in at a T12L1. I'm going to start down at the L1 pedicle, L2 pedicle from the left side. Sticking a burn, Tom. A little numbing medicine. Numbing medicine, Tom. Let me just keep it going if you want. So I make sure I come in contact with the spinous process. And then I slide off that because that's going to be my tract that I'm numbing into the spine. All right, Tom, we're going to let that kick in a little bit, okay? All right. All right, I'll pause. I use a 20 gauge to puncture the skin a little bit before putting the introducer needle in. And that just takes away for a little pressure. And Tom's fully awake, aren't you, Tom? Yeah. All right, you can feel a little pressure. All right, Tom? Yeah. So you get that pressure in there, and I just confirm them underneath the skin. And then I advance it towards the spinous process and towards the lamina on the screen. Doing okay, Tom? Yeah. And I just keep confirming my position as I head to that. Oh. Well, we can numb you up there too. So as you get past the introducer needle, you gotta sit there and numb a little bit deeper into the skin and you just use your introducer needle to do so. Doing okay, Tom? Yeah. That should generally numb everything down to the lamina. Okay, when I get to that position and my alignment is okay from an AP perspective, I'll go to a lateral. Okay, so we go on our lateral and you can see where I am. I'm heading right on the lamina of L1 and I'm going to slide off into the posterior neuroforamen at uh, the T12 L1 interspace. And that's basically right here. And that's the epidural space. As long as my needle stays posterior to that, I'm not in the epidural space. As I get to that area, then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to wind up in the epidural space. So based on keeping my AP on the right side, I'll then tilt my needle down so I'll get a little shallow of an angle like that. And I'll head right underneath and by the facet joint into the epidural space. You let me know if you just feel pressure, Tom, okay? Right. Yeah. If it gets sharp, I'll let you know. I generally stop about right there and I test by putting the stylet in place to get into that epidural space. Omnipate can confuse where you actually are if you're not in the epidural space and your loss of resistance technique is not as reliable with a 14 gauge introducer needle if the person has a history of scar tissue because there's already loss of resistance. So what I'll do is I'll just thread the lead in and see if it goes in. Right now I got some resistance here and I'm right at the needle tip. So sometimes you can push through it and you can see it's not going on the fluoro machine. Okay, so I'll just sit there and come back a little bit, advance just a little bit more. I use my left hand to push and the right hand guards the needle in case he feels anything. I just slowly advance it a little bit more. And I'll go and check again. And there you see it go in. You see that go in and how it just curves up posteriorly on your fluoro, and that's in the epidural space. I confirm that position, and then we go to an AP to advance our needle up. Okay, if we look up on the screen on our AP view, you can see that we're in the midline of the epidural space on the screen. What I like doing is I like transferring out the original stylet that comes with the equipment, which is a straight stylet, and putting in a curved tip stylet. I generally start with the stylet with the green top on it. It's green and has a blue. The blue indicates that it's uh, curved. 
as opposed to if it was green without a blue top, it would mean that it's a straight needle. Um, the green, okay, so we have the green tip in here with the curved electrode, and then we're going to follow the screen as I slowly advance it up midline. Tom, you might feel some things in your back. Right. You let me know if it gets uncomfortable. Okay. As you can see, I'll sit there and I'll rotate my curve so I stay dead midline. I get a little resistance here because he's had prior surgery. We're at 11, 10. Okay, I'm going to curve the tip back again. And here's where he's had the prior surgery. And I can feel a little resistance on there because you can already see that he has electrodes in place. And these electrodes have actually migrated up uh, two vertebral bodies. So we got an uh, electrode placed at the top of T9. We can't move it up any further because of his prior surgery. We had the other paddle that migrated up two vertebral bodies. Um, and currently we're doing programming. So we have Michelle who's turning it on. And these are the responses you should be getting when you're stimulating the right areas. Mr. Carter, uh, how are you feeling this? In my right leg. Okay, are we covering the area that's causing you pain? Yeah, but it's mid thigh. A little too high. A little too strong. I'm going to yeah. back it down a little bit. Oh, about there. Okay. And by doing this, you can see the importance of being communicating with the patient because if you don't communicate with the patient, you're not going to know where you're stimulating. Right. You feeling any pain, Tom? No. So, if you anesthetize locally with anesthetic, you should be able to do this fine and you'll get a better trial. Mr. Uh, Carter, are you covering your back and your right thigh? Yeah. Okay. Everything feels good. You don't feel the pain that you normally feel on your right thigh? No. Good. Great. We have two programs going on, one at the top of the electrodes and then one in the middle of the electrodes. So basically the active programs are based on uh, covering up the T9 vertebral body for the most part. Okay, so we have everything in place and we're at the top of T9 and now we got to take the introduced needle out. If you notice, it's kind of like doing a central line. We've taken the stylet out and then I'm going to hold the electrode in place and I'm actually going to move the introduced needle back to the electrode until it comes out of the skin. And now we're just out of the skin. Now you grab the electrode at the base, okay? and you just pull it out. And it's really important to hold the electrode in place because sometimes these little electrodes will get caught on this and actually pull your electrode. Once you're done with that, we gotta clean up the electrodes a little bit, okay, just to get some fluid off of them. So I just use that and I put it back in place into our system right here. So we put it in place like that, and we're hooked up in zero to seven, and then we kind of clamp it down. We're then gonna ask Michelle to turn it on again and make sure that we haven't moved. We're gonna go back under X-ray, and again, you can see that we're at the top of T9, and you can see both screens look the same. The right one is the screen that we saved before we took the introducer needle out, and the one on the left is the one that we currently have in place. So Michelle will sit there and turn on the programmer with the programs that we saved to cover his pain, and we want to make sure that we get the same response. Okay, Mr. Uh, Carter, turning this on again. Turning this on slowly. Just tell me when you feel this, okay? Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Where do you feel that? My thigh. Are we covering all of your right thigh? Yeah. Front and back? Yeah. Okay, and on the sides. <laughs> I'm turning this up. <laughs> Tell me when you feel this. Yeah, I feel it now. Nice too, and strong? Too, yeah, too much. Too much. Okay, so we're covering the whole thigh. Yeah. Okay, are we covering your back as well? <laughs> yeah, I don't feel my minute. Right. Great. I'm going to turn this off now, just while we're securing everything. So now we're going to secure the electrode in, ta in, in place, and I generally use tape to do that in stereo strips. I find that tincture of benzoin works out really well because that gets everything nice and sticky. Tom, which side do you sleep on? Left. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it over to the right side so that when he sleeps on his left side he's not going to have any problems. 
So I just take the tincture of benzoin and I kind of spread it around here in a nice distribution. And I take steri strips. We use the half inch steri strips to secure it in place. For those who remember how to secure NG tubes in place, that's pretty much how you're doing it. You put a steri strip down here and then you attach it. To your electrode and wrap it around your electrode like that so you can kind of see that and I'll do that that way and then I'll just do one going the other way and that kind of acts as like a traction so that it helps support it. Generally these things will migrate distally when they're going to migrate. So I'll put another one right here to secure it in place. I believe in lots of tape. Then when you're done with that, I'll put another restraining loop around it. And what I'll do is I'll go underneath the electrode place the electrode down on it and then cross it over like you secure an IVs okay I then keep it like that and then I tape it just down a little bit more like that once that's in place and we know that we have stimulation okay we're gonna open up Tegaderm and I tape this closed so it shouldn't come undone In addition to that, I had a little padding underneath the, be the, the connector and that just prevents irritation into the skin and then I use the Tegaderm to cover everything up. Um, at this time of year, things get sweaty so he will have some fluid buildup underneath. but. Generally, it stays in place very nicely. So I put that down like that. Peel everything off. And just really push it down. And that tincture of benzoin really acts as a good glue. Holds everything in place. Um, I'm going to use another one to cover the battery. And I'm going to use one more just to get the end of, of that. So I'll put this like this. You doing all right, Tom? Yeah. All right. So over T9, T -top. T top of T9. Again, we're recording our, our, our placement of, of the top electrode. And the top electrode is over the top of the T9 vertebral body. And that's really important for when you go to implant. That just, just because I was a little short on this corner down here, so I'm putting another one over top of it. And that's it. Everything's in secure place. We got x-ray confirmation. How'd we do, Tom? All right. All right. Tom's doing well. And now we're going to take him into the recovery room and undergo reprogramming. Start to finish, 25 minutes.